Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In the previous video, we found the inverse of the function f of x equals x plus 6 over x minus 3. That was part A of a My Math Lab question for a Blitzer textbook. And um, part B asks us to verify that our inverse is correct. Um, using a fact about inverse functions. If you compose the original function with the inverse function, you should always get x. And the order doesn't matter. So whether you take f of f inverse of x or f inverse of f of x, you should get x. So we're going to just confirm that that happens for these functions. So first I'm going to find f of f inverse of x. And so I like to think of it as working inside the parentheses first. I'm going to replace f inverse of x with what it's actually equal to, which is 6 plus 3x over x minus 1. So that's going to um, look like this, f of 6 plus 3x over x minus 1. Now what this is telling us to do is to plug the expression in the parentheses into the original function f. So we're going to take all of this and we're going to plug it in instead of an x. In each place that we had an x before, we're going to have 6 plus 3x over x minus 1. It's going to make a fairly complicated expression, but we'll, we'll muddle through. So here we go. We're going to put um, uh, the big fraction bar. And we know we're going to have a plus 6 and a minus 3. But instead of having x's in the front, we're going to have x 6 plus 3x over x minus 1 and 6 plus 3x over x minus 1. All right, now we, uh, we definitely do not want to leave our um, expression like this. Um, this is called a complex fraction, which means a fraction within a fraction. We never leave expressions looking like that. And one of the techniques that we use to simplify them is uh, we focus in on these denominators of these little fractions within the big fraction and we multiply through by a least common denominator. Well, there is only one denominator in this case, x minus 1. So we're going to multiply through by x minus 1 in both the top and the bottom of the big fraction. In other words, um, we can't just multiply by x minus 1 because we want to, but we can multiply by 1, and x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is equal to 1, um, assuming it's not undefined. So we're going to distribute, when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So we're going to have to distribute that x minus 1 across those parentheses, so it's actually going to end up in each term. So here I've distributed the x minus 1 to each term inside of the numerator of the big fraction and each term in the denominator of the big fraction. And well, the reason why we do this is because uh, we want things to cancel, specifically these x minus 1s, so that we no longer have fractions within a fraction. So what's going to be left behind is just a factor of 1, and 1 times anything is itself. So we're just going to have 6 plus 3x plus, and then over here I'm going to have 6 times x and 6 times negative 1. So plus 6x and then minus 6. And in the denominator we'll have 6 plus 3x and then we're going to have to distribute this negative 3 times x and times negative 1. So that's going to give us minus 3x and then plus 3. So from there we're going to combine like terms in the top and combine like terms in the bottom. So in the numerator, 6 and negative 6 cancel out. 3x plus 6x is 9x. And then in the denominator, the 3x and the negative 3x cancel out. They add up to 0. And we're left with just 6 plus 3, which is 9. Now dividing 9x by 9, we just get x, which is what we expected to get. So, so far so good, f of f inverse of x is equal to x. And now we're going to go the other way. We're going to find f inverse of f of x. So working from the inside parentheses out, I'm going to replace f of x with what it's equal to, which is x plus 6 over x minus 3. 
And now we need to plug that into f inverse. So anywhere the original, um, sorry, where the function f inverse had an x, we're going to replace that with what's in the parentheses here. So that's gonna go into two places. So we're gonna have six plus three times something. What is the something? That's the x plus six over x minus three that we're plugging in. And then in the denominator, we'll have something minus one. What minus one? x plus six over x minus three minus one. All right, so this is how you plug in and now we have to simplify. And just like before, we are going to multiply through by the least common denominator, focusing in on the two little denominators from the little fractions inside of this larger fraction. The only denominators we have are x minus three. So you're gonna multiply by x minus three over x minus three. That way you're really multiplying by one and we're gonna distribute that to each term in the top and each term in the bottom of the big fraction. Notice this is very similar to the other uh, step where we confirmed f of f inverse of x. We distributed the x minus ones to the top and the bottom. This time it's just x minus threes. And once again, we see some things cancel. And in the numerator, we're going to distribute the six and get six x minus 18. And then we're also gonna distribute the three to the x plus six. So we're gonna have plus three x plus 18. And then we're gonna divide that by, in the denominator, the x plus six is just left alone. We have to distribute the negative one and we get negative x plus three. Now we're going to combine like terms. You'll notice that the uh, negative 18 and the positive 18 cancel out. The x and the negative x in the denominator cancel out. Combining like terms in the numerator, 6x plus 3x is 9x. And in the denominator, 6 plus 3 is 9. Dividing out the 9s, we're just left with x as we expected. So this confirms that the function that we found is in fact the inverse of the original function f. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.